Hey y'all, today I'm gonna to be working on prepping for one of my upcoming projects. So what I'm gonna be doing is dyeing some fabric. So this is the fabric that I have. This is a 28 count Monaco linen. So yes, it's gonna be a cross stitch project. Um, but anyways, this is just plain white and I don't like stitching on plain white. It tends to get really dirty. So, and I really like dyeing my fabrics. So I'm gonna show you how each fabric dye. Now what I'm using is RIT dye. This is a concentrated dye. You can uh, dye up any type of cotton type fabric that you want. It doesn't work so well on polyesters, but it can be done. Anyway, this is uh, what I'm going to be using. Uh, the other product or things that you need are going to be some cups. I'm going to need this because I dilute this just a little bit and a pie pan. Old fashioned, I guess old fashioned uh, tin pie pan. So the first thing I need to do, uh, for, normally I would uh, take the edges of my material and uh, do a blanket stitch around the outer edge. You can use a sewing machine if you want. Uh, this piece though, the fabric is extremely large. It's going to be way bigger than what I need. So I'm not going to worry about stitching it at this point. The reason you want to stitch it is to keep it from fraying. Like I said, this one's so big that if it does fray, what I'll do is I will just cut off those edges and stitch it up before I actually begin working on the piece. But for right now, since it's going to be another month or two before I get started on this, and anybody who knows me knows that I like to uh, start things ahead of time and be prepared for when the actual project or task at hand is uh, needing to be done. So um, again, I'm not going to be uh, blanket stitching the edges on this one, normally would. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to get your fabric wet, get it um, moist and, and wring it out. So this is what I've done. Here's this fabric. And then you want to kind of wad it up. Uh, you can, um, like, like any type of tie-dye artwork, you can band it if you want into certain um, shapes like lines or creases. Or um, the way I was always taught to do this is you want to make a nest in your uh, pie pan. So you make it up like a little nest. Crinkle it up and just kind of do a general nest with it. Okay, so I have water in all of my cups right now. Most of them, they're filled up to about this little line down here at the bottom. Uh, so except for um, the brown, this will be brown here. I've got this one, it's just a little bit past. Uh, I don't want this to be a really dark brown. It's supposed to, this is a fall themed piece, so that's why I've got brown, green, orange, and then yellow. Yellow doesn't have a lot of water in it because I want this to have a lot of yellow to it. I don't want so much of the green and orange because the piece has a lot of green and orange in it. So I just kind of want hints of that within the fabric. Now I've already shaken these up. So what I'm gonna do is um, just pour some of this in here. Well, you know, we'll try and measure. So a cap full. We'll do a cap full in each one. Hopefully this doesn't make too much of a mess. I forgot to put down some paper to protect my table. It's a really old table, so I guess it really doesn't matter. Ooh, this one's a little bit thicker. That one's really thick. Thick and splashy. Yep, I already got it over me. They say wear gloves. Okay. How boring is that to wear gloves? You're not crafting if you wear gloves, right? Orange. Ooh, it's yellow. Since I want a lot of yellow, I'm gonna do two caps of yellow on here. And then I need to get a spoon and I'm gonna mix this up with a spoon. Now comes the fun creative part. So I've mixed them up. Now, like I said, I wanted to have a lot of yellow in this. I'm going to start with the yellow first, and I'm just going to pour this in here. Different spots, lots of yellow. This is where your creativity gets to shine. So I'm going all around. And yes, I got a paper to protect my table. All right, a little bit of orange. 
Like I said, I don't want a whole lot of orange in this. Because there's already orange in the picture. A little bit of green. This may not be a dark enough green. Ooh, that one kind of went. Looks kind of pumpkin-y at this point. All right, and then our brown. I really like this brown. Let's see. Ooh, it's dark. Now these will definitely um, end up being lighter than they are right now. It will, um, they kind of fade when you wash it out. Now this would probably do better if um, I used hot water. I didn't. I don't have hot water here unless I boil it up. So not hot water. So that's kind of a fall look to it. It's like a salad on my phone. Let's do some more yellow. Like I said, I really wanted this to have a lot of yellow to it. So this yellow is going to come in here. Let's see. A little more, a little more orange to kind of fill in. I really want it to not have any white. Now the one thing that's happening is these colors are sitting at the bottom of this pan. Now this is the way that I had looked on how to, to do these dyes. Now this may not be um, the best way. Um, there may be another way to keep it from soaking down at the bottom. I don't know. So uh, just a tad more green. In a few places. Maybe it'll pick up. All right, so that's what I've got now. Um, let's see some different angles. So a lot of it looks like when it hits the fabric, it doesn't really do much. Um, as far as it only, it's only going through where the um, color's white right now. So the stuff that's on the bottom isn't doing much. But I am going to go dump this in the sink so that I am not having a just blood mess. Hopefully it doesn't turn out that way. But we're not letting it sit for very long. Um, normally I would let it sit for like half an hour before I rinsed it. So um, I may take this and just unfold it and we'll see what happens. We'll let it sit like that for half an hour. Normally I only do a couple of colors so I really want them blended and, and meshing together. I've never done one with this many colors. Okay, so I really didn't let that sit long at all. I took it straight over to the sink and started rinsing it out. Those colors were really dark, and I really didn't want this that dark. Um, but anyways, it's, I know it fades. I know it does. These always look really bright when they're, when they're wet. But here is this fabric. Is this not amazing? Look at that. It is so cool. So right now I've got it sitting on a towel. Uh, I didn't want to get it all over the, I didn't get the table wet. So what I'm going to do now is um, probably get the iron out and iron on this and it'll help set all the colors. The heat, heat will help set it. If you ever do one and you don't like the way it looks, all you have to do is, um, well, I've been told you can use one of those color eraser um, sheets, a color guard or color, color catcher um, sheets in the dryer and you can, it'll take out the color that way. I don't have a dryer, so I can't do that. But anyways, this is what it looks like. Um, I'll post here in a minute when it's uh, when it's dry, and then show you how much it's faded. And you can see that um, the color you start out with isn't necessarily the color that it's going to be. So if you have one that you really wanted a really dark, rich color, you're gonna have. I mean, it'll have to be extremely dark when you start off when it's wet. So this one should fade out really well and it's really neat is this was the side that the dye was on and then this side is the other one I know it may not come up on the camera very well um, but it's uh, it's a little bit lighter 
on this side. So, um, and I know there's a right side and a wrong side when it comes to stitching. I've never really paid attention to that. So for me, it doesn't matter. Whichever side I like better is the one that I will stitch on. Like I said, the piece that I've got, it's, um, it's by Lavender and Lace. It's called Celtic Autumn. And I'm doing the alternative of changing out the colors to her dress. It's a, it's a, it's a lady and it's got some Celtic kind of work on the corner of it. It says Autumn across the top. But anyways, there's a, a new color rendition of it that is instead of being the pastel colors all of the their seasons every season has um it's almost the same lady but her dress is just gorgeous and um they're different usually almost pastel type colors so i'm i want to change that up to more of an autumn type thing some of them i want i have the whole set and there are so many different conversions out there for these patterns there's a christmas one there's um oh my gosh there's one for halloween where it's black and orange it's gorgeous too and so i'm hoping eventually to do every single one of them i've even seen one that's red white and blue for um you know for i guess fourth of july or, or independence or whatever you know i don't know um holiday or country you want it to be so um anyway pretty excited but yeah I love dyeing these uh, fabrics they're so much fun I, if I could just do that and then instantaneously have my stuff stitched on it would be great so this is the the easy part of the project so hopefully you'll start dyeing your own fabrics well here it is it's all dry it does look really dark here in the video uh, I can guarantee you it's really not this dark so but turned out really nice, turned out really pretty. I'm really happy with it. I think I like this side better. It's not, um, there, it doesn't have these darker pieces, which would, I mean, I don't know. That might be good too. I'm gonna see if I can try and make a rendition of what this will look like with the um, piece that I'm gonna be working on on it. So um, I'm gonna play it guess with a little bit with maybe some Photoshop or something see if I can cut take a picture of the piece and cut it out and then have a, kind of place it over a picture of this I don't know I've never done that so we're gonna see uh, if I get to it great if not I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to dye some fabric and this guys will work with um, t-shirts things like that too bandanas whatever so if you ever want to get into doing some tie-dye or just dying anything this is how to do it y'all have fun thanks for watching